So I had to stick at the park. Yeah? Oh, she was hot. She was just like, hey, oh, man, you just want to pop? Awesome. And I was like, yeah. That's too easy. Yeah. Oh, hey. CIB. Oh. Hey, where'd you earn that CIB at? The PX? What? what it's not mean? stolen valor. I bought it with my- oh! Hey, hey, another Thursday, another Throat Punch Thursday, and today we have for our special guest, the one, the only, Stoned Vet, with the little hand. With the little hand. Hey, I'm Kaiser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I get to thinking, I've been doing this, this uh, Throat Punch Thursday thing for a while, and I never had you on. I didn't realize it, that either. It all, all of a sudden it dawned on me. I was like, fuck, I haven't had Josh on here yet. We did. Well, we did one. That's true. Because I was thinking I had been on there. But what it was is we did one a long time ago. Uh, you showed me that Didion guy. Was that his name? Yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. That guy. So it was like a precursor sort of to the Throat Punch Thursday. But yeah, uh, it was. But yeah, and, I haven't uh, been on this, this show, this actual episode. So, so welcome. And it's actually, it's going to be your show. Well, kind of. Because uh, Fine Fix Finish. On your face. Productions. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're going to be moving Throat Punch Thursday over to that. And yeah. uh, it's probably only going to be twice a month because I got race season coming up. But uh you know, I, I, uh, it's going to be way easier for me. I'm not going to have to spend as much time, uh, with it. And I just, I think it's, it's awesome because, you know, the whole, uh, fine fix finish productions, uh, is starting to evolve. Yeah. And I think that's great. And that way I can just leave my channel because I don't promote my channel. I don't do a lot with it. I do. I mean, this is the most I've done in a while because of Kaiser. Yeah. Uh, yet another piece of shit that will not come clean. <laughs> He's amazing. No, he will not come clean at all. I mean, I don't, I don't even watch. The only time I watch his channel is if I'm watching your uh, stream snipe, which we is were hilarious. Thanks. We were talking. Yeah. Tom and I were talking earlier before this. I can't. I watched like five minutes of Kaiser this morning on the way to, to get a coffee. And I was like, fuck this. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I can't listen to that dude. Unless, unless I got the chat, unless we're stream sniping and then, or whatever. And like we got everybody going. Well, I see the roast has started. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited for all of this to be moved for this show. Uh, one thing I really like with this show with you is just the vets. I mean, the whole part of the fine fix finish and the, and my channel is, is trying to get, make a place where people could come hang out, whatever it's vets, but it's not like, I don't know. It's, it, you know, it's not like a super vet kind of deal. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited for, for the Patreon stuff to get, to get going. So for anybody who's, I mean, I can see part of the chat here, I guess. It looks like a lot of the, the folks who are, are in mine often, so you guys probably know. But uh, pretty soon here, we'll be, next week or two, uh, we will be getting, uh, have all the Patreon set up. And we'll have it a, a tiered thing. And with each one, uh... <laughs> Jesus, man, people, people are relentless. I have created a monster. <laughs> your, your fucking co-host is just like... Of course, he was in the chat earlier. I know, uh, and he was he was already saying this is going to be an SV roast. But then again, <laughs> when isn't it? What did you tell me when you came up? What did you say to me when you first came up? I'm such a dope or something. Oh, I had, <laughs> and and I said like, and I go, yeah, I go, <laughs> man, I'm an idiot, and I was going to go in to say what I'm an idiot about, and he goes, yep. <laughs> what? <laughs> I haven't even said it yet. <laughs> well, like I said, but, man, I mean, it, 
my it is. I mean, you're, you're just, you're that guy, regret, whatever platoon, whatever company, whatever, you've always got the one guy who's a jokester all the time and everybody makes fun of him and you're that guy. You know, it's funny though. Ask Hippie. I agree. I that that's the truth is that's a hundred percent been true. And I was very serious for a while. A caveat yeah. to that before you even get into it. A caveat yeah. to that is that's the go-to guy for most people. Yeah, well, that's the thing is I I was always able to temper. I mean, because one of the things I always did is I took the job very seriously. I just never took myself very seriously. And uh, I, you know, I mean, I just, the way I just grew up, I was constantly getting roasted. I was that guy. And it didn't, the truth is it doesn't bother me. And I find it, a lot of times it's really funny. Uh, and I can throw it back. I don't, you know, I mean, that's, oh, yeah. the, that's you the have thing. To, you have to be able to take it if you're going to throw it out there. And uh, yeah. I mean, I got thick skin. I don't care. I re, all the recent bullshit that's gone on, and all the craziness with some of the incels and and all that. It's it's been nuts. Well, the, hippie's uh, got it. Hippie's got it right. I so if anybody doesn't know, I was in hippie and I were in uh, uh, the three eighteenth tenth battalion psychological operations battalion. We went to Iraq together. I was serious in the army. My my time in the army was serious. It was it wasn't as uh as sort of loosey goosey, but it was it's funny to think about because like back in the day, yeah, I was back in that unit. I was really serious. It's funny because my buddy Danny, who I grew up with, who whose house I'm I'm at here in St. Louis, he's my business partner guy. We were talking about the roasting thing, and he goes, "Yeah, man, you know people do. You know people make fun of you a lot." He goes, and then he pauses and he goes but it's so fucking easy and so much fun. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> okay, jerk. <laughs> uh. Best back shots. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm not going to go there. No. Nope. <laughs> Freaking Jeff. Always love me some but, Jeff. Uh, so let's, let's do this. How did we meet? We met over blue bacon. Yeah. Oh, oh, before we go any farther, we've got. Why is this not fucking coming up? What the hell is wrong with this freaking piece of shit? There Streaming. we go. Yeah. Uh, Danny dropped 20 for the bike, Cobby. Thank you so much, Danny. Danny. I appreciate it. Season's coming up. And for those that don't know, I don't race the big bikes. I race lightweight twins. I'm just going to get into a little tangent here. Uh, lightweight t twins class, 85 horsepower. Uh, I'm riding an Aprilia. And the classes that I race in, I average about 1000 bucks a weekend to go racing. Uh, that's what it cost me. And I've yeah. got about $26,000, $27,000 tied up in my rig and all that shit my bike and all the stuff that goes with it and uh, all that. So it's, it's not a cheap hobby, but I love it. I'm, I'm addicted to the speed. And then we got team bandit coming in here with 1399 Canadian Canadian. <laughs> I have a smoky on me. No bun. <laughs> well, thank you guys. I appreciate that so much. Uh, and like I said, anything I make, uh, it's going to be going into my, my race fund for this season. But to get back to it, we kind of met over blue bacon. Yeah. Um, Cause you were going at them. You were starting to. I, well, I was losing fucking rails. I was losing it. I mean, the truth is I was losing it. I was still, I was, I wasn't brand new to YouTube. I mean, six months, maybe, maybe, maybe that maybe five months. Uh, Hippie and I were doing so the way it's the way our my channel started is Hippie and I would do a show called uh, Bronze Stars and NJPs, which we're gonna we, we have been bad about starting it back up, but uh, it was we did movie reviews and we would get somebody you know, whatever, but we didn't do it live, we would do it, we would do it recorded and all that stuff. Uh, and then Hippie got uh, sick like, like majorly, and then went to the point where he couldn't do the show. And 
that was kind of when Chile, the kind of part of the height of Chile, the Castro was happening. And so through, and I, and then I was covering Chile and I, I was going pretty hard on Chile, but every, everybody, you know, that's nothing new. Ch every, people talk about Chile. And so, but then through that, then Chile doxed bacon and bacon's response was uh weird and then it started it's i was like something already felt off about the guy a little bit listen he's not stolen valor he plain and simple i was i was wrong about how far i i took it i was i was wrong about that he's not just to be clear he's not and i'm not saying that uh now did he take liberties with some of his stories absolutely for sure but Anyway, I took that as also I had not really done Stolen Valor before. I I didn't, you know, I mean I watched it. I watched DeWitt. I knew you from watching your DeWitt content. And so then I reached out to you and then uh Steve from Guardians of the of the Green Beret cuz I I didn't want you to cuz I just didn't know how to do it. I was going to do it myself and I knew you did it and I was like, "Hey, this is who I am. This is what I'm looking at." Uh, and then we got into the, the blue bacon shit. And then I was getting bacon had a lot of people and people were, I started getting trolled a lot. And back then I didn't know how to deal with it. I wanted to fight everybody. And so I was used to like, you want to talk some shit? Give me an address. <laughs> you know, like, Let's fucking go. And I, I mean, it was a, it was a whole bunch of different shit. Uh, that kind of came at once. I, I was I was on the wrong Medicaid, clearly just on the wrong medication. Uh, I I didn't know how to handle all of this. I was kind of isolated in my life at the time. I'm not meaning it. Just I was back in Charlottesville uh, with my kids. I didn't I I was I didn't have many friends or anything. I was just sort of isolated, and so I was laser focused on this YouTube thing, and it. Luckily, for those that don't know, I kind of top and I'm like, I'm literally looking at plane tickets to fly to fucking Washington. Like, I'm going to fuck this dude up. That's what, you know, I was like, oh, I was out of my head. And he's like, you have got to calm the F down, dude. Yep. And I was like, oh, I mean, literally, that's kind of all it took. I was like, yeah, what, what the hell? What am I doing? <laughs> and I, I mean, this is good. I mean, listen. Part of that is is what the what what I want the channel vets connecting to vets. Another vet telling you, "Hey man, calm it down. You don't need this." Or or hey, let me help you out with this thing or whatever. You know, a lot of times we have this. Our generation has this disconnect that sort of G watt because we're not big into the VFWs or the legions and all of that, no. and, and 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 so we don't have that same kind of connection. Social media kind of took took place of that now i've been on i was on some like marine sites <clears throat> there used to be back in the day uh together we served was a sort of an uh early social media kind of thing and it just isn't the same it just wasn't the same uh and also they didn't like shit talking on those on those channels like they would block you or give you a ban if you're talking shit it's like first of all it's only marines in here i don't understand <laughs> like but i wanted but i wanted the channel to uh it's not it it, it is not i know it I, wasn't even then I, it was, he says it was but it wasn't yeah it, 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 it took a bit but we had I mean, a couple of phone conversations and and it was like it clicked at one point and he's like all right i got you yeah and, it, no it definitely took a minute because once i get into my mind that i want to that i want to put some pain on somebody i'm i'm kind of i mean the truth is that's the ptsd part I want, I want, I want you to feel the pain that I'm feeling. It's bad. I don't, I don't dig it. But normally, when it pre PTSD for work, it would be great because I'm a pit bull for the job, and and you set me on an objective, and it's like go, and I'm you know, and yeah. whoever whoever's with me, I I would tell my teammates all the time. I'm like, I'll get you into a bunch of shit. I just need you to make sure you know. I'll get you out of whatever I get you into, but I just need your help getting me into shit. And uh, yeah, that's how I just saw how I treated the job. It didn't translate to the civilian world <laughs> and it didn't translate to my mental health. Uh, but yeah, so the bacon thing. And then, uh, yeah, I got trolled into oblivion kind of, 
by that. I let myself now. Now I don't care. Now I just let the trolls troll. I, you know, like, hey man, have fun with it. If you're any good, if you're bad at it, I'm going to make fun of you. But I'm not going to. Sp- I don't spin out anymore. Um, I mean, Kaiser Kaiser is one of the dudes that will make me like. I'll watch him, and even this morning, I could feel myself getting that like, you know. And again, I, I don't he's a piece of shit human being just in general. Uh, but the stolen valor for him is what really keeps me on him. I mean, cause there's plenty of dirtbag criminals out there, you know, people yeah. like, like him. There's uh, tons of them out there. And, and you know, that's it too. And the only reason, the only reason I've been on YouTube as much as I have been recently is because I get these guys that are, that are prominent on some type of social media. And when confronted, they run away and never admit it. But yet behind the scenes, they're still spewing those lies. Because yeah. I guarantee you, Kaiser is still talking shit about being in the military. No oh, doubt yeah. in my mind. Like Th- this. There- it's 2024 and DeWitt's still claiming he was in Afghanistan and Iraq. And we have audio tapes of police interviews with this shit bag yeah. where he says, well, I wasn't in the army. No those shit you amazing. weren't in the army. You those were are a convicted amazing. fucking felon at the age of 18. <laughs> There's no way anybody was going to give you a friggin' waiver to join the military. Yeah. Not happening. You have to get that. Okay. So there, you can get a waiver. However, you must get your record expunged. That's the only way, because there is a federal law in regards to felons and firearms. The Lautenberg yeah. Act. You've is probably that heard that if you've been in the military. The yeah. Lautenberg Act. So DeWitt, DeWitt's amazing. Kaiser really is on that level. I'm Kaiser's oh, yeah. in, a, in a way... I was thinking about because it does come up, and we have talked about it. Uh, and, you know, it's come up on shows like "Who's Worse, Kaiser or Dewitt?" <clears throat> I go back and forth. For a while, I was thinking Kaiser for sure, <clears throat> but it, as far as to Dewitt, Ballard, Dewitt, because he's got such a broad um, overview of everything that he's faked, like faking yeah. being a cop, uh, faking being a special forces man. I mean, he definitely. And, and he promoted himself over the years because I did yeah. an interview with a kid that worked for him down in Florida. Yeah. I, 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 and saw I saw that. Yeah. He, he was like, yeah, he was a Lieutenant and he took him on base and bought him a bunch of shit. And Jeremy's excuse was he forgot his ID card mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. Um, That's you right. Know, yeah. But uh, it, unbelievable. Unfucking believable. Both of these and, guys uh, to this day, still, you know, but I think he's 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 gonna get good jail time on those uh insurance fraud right. cases because you start fucking around with big business and the courts aren't gonna just uh give you a slap on the wrist, you know. Everybody it's, hates it's, cops, so so what if he was impersonating a cop? It's really interesting because the impersonating the cop thing is is. I really, until DeWitt, I always saw police impersonations as a kind of akin to stolen valor. I didn't re I did not think about dude. His people were pulling people over, uh, yeah. writing fake tickets. I, I also then like the potential sexual assault stuff. Like I'm like, Oh man, Impersonating police officers are actually way worse kind of than I than I was assuming. I I I literally did just kind of always thought of it as like a stolen valor kind of kind of situation. But no, you well, can that, cause you can cause real damage faking that. And he keeps cop. he keeps getting locked up for failure to register for his sex offender registry. I mean, yeah. he's a convicted sex offender on top of it, where he was grooming a friend of the family's fourteen year old daughter or some shit. I, was I don't know the whole ins and outs of that, but that's I, just scumbaggery I, at another level. It, it and it is different than Kaiser. Listen, Kaiser's terrible. Kaiser is 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 
is terrible and is a problem. And he's actively committing stolen valor still. And what he's trying to do to whitewash his history and, and, and all of this is, is bad because then it, I mean, but it's for a grift. DeWitt has it. DeWitt's out in the wild. The one nice thing with Kaiser is he sits at home and he sits on the computer. And the truth is the more he's on YouTube, the less he's, he's probably really out hurt. Cause if this yeah, dude in you... somebody's house and stealing on their pills. Exactly. Cause if you're in striking distance and you got pills of this motherfucker, he's going to, he's going to break into your house. And so like when you watch him on YouTube, I, I, you know, and part of me has to feel, cause he can be frustrating. It can be frustrating to watch. Same with DeWitt. I mean, I would watch DeWitt in amazement. Like, how in the fuck is this dude out doing this stuff? I mean, uh, Vidler and uh, who was the other the two the two cops who were oh, on uh, him? Yeah, Vidler and Ramsey. Ramsey and Ramsey Corporal was Ramsey. the. Film. I mean, you got two cops that are on him. You got two people actively look and and they can't. I mean, this dude's blatantly doing shit, but yet. I don't know if that's Florida or if it's just I one of the things YouTube has taught me is oh laws don't matter. If you don't want them to matter, laws do not matter. It's in, it's insanity to me. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I feel like well they're just there to to get people like me cuz I feel guilt, I feel shame, you know, like most people do. You feel these things. People like Kaiser and and DeWitt, they don't care. And if you don't have that that shame trigger in you, Laws don't, you can go a long time without the, with just skirting the law and, and blatantly, blatantly with sirens on like to win <laughs> and nobody's do nobody can do anything. Apparently. <clears throat> it, yeah. It, it was, uh, that was pretty interesting. I haven't even looked up his records lately. I know he's got a bunch of court dates coming up and I'm only following that, uh, I mean, he's got booking documents that are out on the internet where he actually told them he was a veteran. Yeah. Um, All that. Trying to get into a, a, a veteran deferred program. Uh, but I mean, at how many felonies do you have to commit and be convicted of uh, before you get serious time for being a habitual felon? Well, and this is what gets me with Kaiser is Kaiser has five felony convictions and he's got five open felonies right now. I don't understand the situation with how he's, I mean, he's definitely out on bond and he's still, even he admits he's awaiting trial or whatever it is for these to be adjudicated all the way through. No, that's adjudicated. Adjudicated, right. yeah. Adjudicated. Man, he is double, tripling, quadrupling down on the adjudicated, <laughs> too. Uh, but I, it just, it's crazy to me that they just let, first of all, it's crazy to me that a dude who who was put on house arrest under ankle ankle monitor before and broke and broke it uh, would be allowed to be out on house, you know, house arrest for pretrial confinement, I guess. Uh, I don't know. It just, I, I just wonder, my feeling with Kaiser is he, uh, he'll go to jail for the for the breaking into his work, stealing from his work before he'll before the murder thing. But I just can't believe that they're not gonna that he's not hemmed up in prison right now. I I, I don't get it. But yeah, he did. There was and there was a lot more than that. Uh, Residential Centers of American Least Own has been. Uh, subscriber of mine for a long time and was with me all throughout the DeWitt stuff. I've uh, been around for a long time. And uh, yeah, you're right. There were, it was more than just that as well. Uh, but trying to get anyone to prosecute, they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But we've got enough on them already. Uh, yeah. In some ways. So the whole stolen valor act is a federal law about it. However, Every almost every state I've ever looked into has got their own stolen valor laws. Um, some of them exactly mirror 
what the federal stuff says. Other ones uh, are a little bit broader, and some of them are a little bit narrower in scope. Um, but, you know, trying to get somebody to prosecute, that's the my thing. Butt, my, buddy, <clears throat> my buddy just ran into, uh, he, here in St. Louis, he was in town visiting, and him and another friend were out at a bar, and they struck up a conversation with this guy who was sitting there. And he's like, oh, I'm an author. I'm former military, blah, blah, blah. And he was saying some stuff. And even my 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 two friends who were there talking to the guy are civilians. And they're like, this sounds fishy as fuck. And so then he's like, here's my card. And and uh, and they're like, oh, our buddy, what, what got them to is they're like, oh, our buddy does a YouTube channel. And he covers a lot of stolen valor. And the guy's like, they're like, the guy just kind of froze up a little bit. And then... uh. I looked him up. The dude's got the dude's got a a, a felony, a federal caught federal charges for uh imper- for stolen valor uh and impersonating a federal intel officer, which I I didn't know that that was I mean, I knew that was a thing. You're not supposed to do that or whatever, but like I didn't I'm like, "Oh my god, they actually prosecuted the dude on it too." On on I but what he was doing is he was taking money he was saying he was he was some secret agent kind of guy and then fleecing landlords and shit like that. That's what they so they got him. They they really got him for the for the fraud. I just was surprised uh to see that busted twice for doing it. It's a mental, it's a mental thing. These guys have this there's a psychological problem that these dudes have. You know. Bree, if you find anything in a live where he apologizes for it. Please let us know. Yeah. Because the only thing he's ever said on video, the one thing I didn't do is I didn't commit stolen valor. That's the only shit I've ever heard out of his lips. That is it. What's going on, Bree? Bree's a new, Bree's been value added to my, she came over, she got gifted a membership. It was like the whole gifted membership thing worked. She, she's a, a product of that and came over and was hanging out. She's been, she's been great. But yeah, I, uh, there's nothing. I, I don't know. Listen, I have been covering Kaiser extensively for months. I don't know. I've never heard. I feel like I've watched just, you know, I mean, lately in the last two months, I probably skipped, skipped a bunch, but he's never apologized for anything. Also, it's not just apologizing. He needs to come out and say, I lied. He He's, this is what they get. He apologized. Apologized for what? For killing a dude? Oh, I'm sorry. My bad. I apologize for stolen valor. My bad. No. It's got to say I lied. Nothing I said was fucking true. He failed basic training twice. He claims all of this shit. No, it's not It's not about apologizing. It's, it's about coming clean. But he doesn't have that. He doesn't have that fucking gene inside of him. He's not going to come clean because he feels no. He's a sociopath. He feels no shame, no empathy, nothing. He does not care. Most people will be like, well, I care what Craig thinks. So I'm going to, you know, not call him a bald headed old fuck or something like that. I don't know. But you know what I mean? Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm like just trying to get it. Fucking happen. I'm just trying to get it in. <laughs> uh, get it no, in no, while no. you can there. Get yeah. It. <laughs> oh my god biscuits and groovy i'm still thinking about him the other day uh lick my stink star link my stink fish stink star you guinea fuck <laughs> like, I'm so, i just i wish i didn't fu- i mean i'm glad i find all these funny because it does make it more enjoyable but sometimes i'm like i know when i laugh at this shit it, it encourages people <laughs> and i'm like all right i get it <laughs> i'm a guinea fuck no but i, I kaiser's just never gonna what so I've had to really switch around kind of how I view him and think about him. Because at first I was like, oh, well, this dude needs exposure. We got to call out his lies. Now it's become more of just a psychological study of the dude. And like, because it's it's just crazy. Because until he gets caught, he's not going to, until he gets real caught by real law enforcement, like he's in cuffs kind of shit. He's not going to stop saying any of his lies. Because no, and, and Joey, Joey, you're right. He he admitted to his criminal stuff, 
but he didn't admit to anything on the military side because, well, he, he didn't, he didn't. Uh, what did he, what did he tell Dick bag? Um, so he said, that's what I was just thinking. He goes, but it wasn't was... in combat with an enemy of the U S or some shit like that. He said, I was deployed, but it wasn't with a, yeah. So you, my thinking on this honestly is because he, he's, uh, he's super into nineties, you know, military movies and shit like that, which I, I mean, me too. I love those too. So when he starts telling stories, a lot of times I'm like, Oh, that's from this movie. That's from this movie. Uh, I think he takes that from clear and present danger. I really, I honestly do. I think, I think he, he, because he talks about drug suppression, right? And that, uh, I don't know if you remember that movie or if you read that book, clear drug, and drug suppression. Is that when he just swallows the whole bottle of pills? Right. When he, ta- when he takes all the fentanyl and all the opiates. So people, other people don't get any, <laughs> drug suppression <laughs> for Kaiser. Yeah, I I cuz I mean people people that what he does is a thing that that lo, like a DeWitt like prolific liars do is there's just so much out there. So like he's just stopped talking about his dog his fake daughter for example or his dogs. Uh, he just is like, "Well, I just won't mention that anymore." Cuz he doesn't care if uh JTF six, baby. Yeah. That hippie. Yeah. Back in the day. Well, you probably, you, you, how long did you do drug suppression unit for? You did it for a long time, didn't you? No, I did it for six months. Oh, 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 oh. I had my head. You don't get to do it long. Mm. Cause is is it, if, unless you're like a data collector or something like that, but if you're. Cause you're out on the street. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, and I did it very early, early in my career. Mm. Um, and like six months, and I was back on the road because really? you know you start yeah. doing it when you go to a new post. You'll they'll look at you and say, "Yeah, we could use him as a stoner," and they farm you out. You get attached to CID. You work for them as an MP drug suppression team and you do your thing. And, um, yeah, it, it was only six months. Yeah. It was right at six it, months. It's interesting. I don't, I, for some odd reason, I just had in my head. I thought you had told me you did it for, uh, for years, but no, you, no, you were probably no, talking no. about some, yeah, you were probably, I'm sure it's me just miss. I doubt you would have told me, uh, a lie about it. Uh, somebody, where was it? I, uh, Stephanie J- Jenks. Kaiser was caught doing a bump last night on his live and he gagged on camera again. So I, did you see that? I, I didn't see it live. I saw it. Um, uh, Jeff actually sent a text with it. Oh, he did a bump. Yeah. He did it on camera. Yeah. But he did a little, uh, well, he, he did, did a little... so he did it off camera. Uh, let's see here. It's in it. Let me pull up the text. Maybe I can pull up the video here. Uh, did, did he, did, did, did he do a little bump up? Did he? It sure fucking looks, seems like it. Let's see if I can, uh, here, let, am I able to share? I yeah. think I can pre- present, present it and I'll bring it up. Okay. Oh, there it, it's already up. Okay, cool. Okay, so this is this is him from last night. This is a uh, for public safety's video. You can see it there. Whatever you think of that guy, he's off camera first. He's behind the scenes doing his bump. But he just came back after doing his bump. Wait, hold on. He's off camera first. Yeah. He's behind the scenes doing his bump. He just came back after doing his bump. Pinch his nose. Here it comes. And now here it comes. <laughs> here it comes. <laughs> I love the cat throw in there. <laughs> yeah. That dope straining down his throat. Anyway, yeah. He's. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. I don't, I, I, there's times when I really just want to be like with Kaiser, uh, but you just gotta, 
for me to keep my sanity and not be frustrated about them is just like it's just study them. It's just study them. I people are you know his people are like, well, your channel's not growing. His is his is growing way faster than yours. It's like okay, first of all, who gives a fuck? But like, secondly, who's got the money who, to spend? He's spending on on subs. Who wants to do that? I mean, the thing is, like, you first of all, once you do that, you instantly sell your credit, your your integrity. You're just kind of, you know, it's there. It's it, but it's 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 also um, the more exposure he gets, like he he is right about the place where he can he can still kind of keep the dam from breaking, right? He's, they're still able to do. He insulates all his. Everything subscriber, members only, whatever. Like he he puts up those barriers, and and then and then he's got like ninety mods in there, and all they're doing is looking for any little thing that says, "When were you in the military?" Stoned vet, any of this kind of shit, and then they delete it right away. And he's not the he gets bigger. He's not going to be able to hold people back. That's why he will not go on to anybody else's channel or shit last time he did five months ago <clears throat> that was frauded or trolls and we saw what happened there he refused he ran to... away with his tail between his legs he absolutely ran away he was like have you seen this video and he's like i gotta go i got other shit i gotta do and his other shit he had to do was he immediately then went on to his channel and started a show uh that's because he wanted to get all of his followers away from fraud or troll over on his channel. So yeah. they didn't get to see, uh, Oh, wait a minute. I got to do a bump. <laughs> <sighs> Actually, I just get an itchy nose. <laughs> I get it all the time. <laughs> uh, look at this. Look at this. He's got acid reflux. Yeah. It's more like bullshit regurgitation. Yeah, he is. The good sugar hit the back of my throat. What so kind of, you know, I, I I could go somewhere with that, but I won't. Yeah. I'll be nice. It's cute. <laughs> Fine fix. Finish. Finish. Finish on them tits. I shouldn't. I got to remember I'm not on my channel. Yet. <laughs> no, yeah, that's I, all right. be, I, you know, I would love. I mean, Chris obviously got fucked up by that lawyer. I mean, that lawyer was like. <laughs> So just kept putting rake after rake after rake in front of him, and he just stepped on every single rake. It would be great to get Kaiser. It, I mean, listen, he was barely put to the test on fraud or troll shit, and he, and he got fucked up. Like if he if he went on now, it's like when he told JJ, "Hey JJ, why don't you go onto that lawyer's channel and do it?" It's like, well, why don't you, Wrangler? JJ has a job. I mean. You know that he seems to. Well, yeah, <laughs> he's got a job that he neglects. Yeah, I don't know. It's really. Uh, I think you <sighs> guy, you and Dick Bag were talking about talking about it. It the ethics. I I just I don't get JJ. I don't get JJ's motivation. Uh, I I don't get why the money is the money that good. I mean, look, I get it. He's he's divorced. Child support sucks, man. It's a lot of money. It can be a lot of money. I mean, I pay out the fucking ass. We used to until things got a little more equitable. But, uh, you know, you pay a lot. I get it. I mean, maybe everybody needs the extra cash. I mean, YouTube gives me extra cash. So great. It pays for my weed and all that kind of stuff. I don't well, know. Uh, Lupe's talking about swallowing. Makes you swallow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what, but I don't feel like anything from this YouTube would be would make me willing to compromise my fucking morals or integrity. But by, by any, <sighs> what's the most he could be making from Kaiser? A grand a month, maybe? I, you know. Well, that would be a pretty big bump. That'd be twelve grand a year. You know, I guess that is on top of a thirty-six thousand dollar a year salary. And when you're not making fucking shit. That extra money does does fucking help. And look, I've been broke. I mean, look, I get it. I mean, you know, you you know, that extra cash can help when you're not making fucking shit. It's true. But I can't imagine. I just 
I don't, I have too much faith in people, uh, because it just, I, I, because I wouldn't compromise myself for, for that, for money like that. I, I, I assume that others wouldn't, and that's not true. And, and JJ completely is compromising. He's com- compromising his office. He's compromising himself. It, it's a lot. And, and for what? Because they hate Chris? Fucking out of control. All right. Yeah. I got a question. Okay, good. Freelancer 37. I bust your balls about it all the time. Where does it come from? Where does it come from? It was my call sign in in Iraq. Uh, so 37 third, is... Third platoon, third platoon, platoon sword. Uh, no, 37. That's what 37 is. Yeah, I, it's uh three seven is just the it's psyop, thirty seven fox. So it was, and it came about from um because I I didn't work with just one conventional unit. I, I did a bunch of different shit, and then I worked for the country team and shit like that. And so it's just freelancer, and then three seven for the uh for psyop. But yeah, I get what you're saying. But no, nobody's nobody. Yeah, just the three sevens, just from side. So yeah, it's because you were you were bitched out to everybody. So pretty much. Well, yeah, so it, it, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it was it was that deployment was uh, difficult, but also the most rewarding because that was the first deployment I was in where I got to deal with national level shit, and, and I got and I got what I got involved in. Uh, which eventually became what was called the Sons of Iraq or the Sunni Awakening. Uh, I was part of, uh, I was one of the tactical teams that we were for the, for that program where I went into, I went and met with people and tried to recruit, figure out, vet people, do an initial vetting on people uh, and then bring them to, you know, present them as like, Hey, this could be somebody we could work with kind of shit with, uh, on specifically on that program. Uh, yeah, it was great. It was fucking great. I, 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 I couldn't well, believe it. Cause being a conventional, been. being a conventional guy, I hear that. And my mind automatically goes to, and like hippie posted, uh, his call signs for his teams. And yeah, you're right. Because like we had an ODA team that had their own call sign. And we just used that one call sign when we were talking with them. Um, even though they had a six element, a seven element uh, in there, but they were only a platoon size element anyway. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they had their teams. But, uh, you know, as a conventional guy, when I hear Freelancer 3 7, I'm thinking third platoon, platoon, platoon yeah. sergeant. Because your six is your uh, commander or your yeah. platoon leader. So if it was first platoon, platoon leader, it would be freelancer 1-1 one, one, uh, when they're trying to reach that platoon leader. Yeah. And the, the platoon, so- or it would be freelancer, yeah, 1-6, I'm sorry. That yeah, would yeah. be the platoon leader. And then 1-7 uh, would be the platoon sergeant. And then uh, the teams would be like, the squad leader for first squad would be one one, one one a, one one b, one one c. That's how conventionally it's all broken down. Um, but I mean, I was the team leader, so I mean, basically they were. I mean, they were always talking. They would. I I wasn't on the radio a ton, but like my my driver or whatever. I mean, I'd be on the radio if it was. But yeah, they they knew they were just talking to the team basically. Uh, KLE, uh, long, who was long, long time KLE. Yeah. Key leader engagement. So it was KLEs, but it was, um, uh, it was for a different kind of purpose. Like KLEs became a big thing that, that, that people go, the captain or, you know, whoever goes and sits down in Afghanistan, they call them Shuras. They'd have district meetings. They'd have all these different things in Iraq, whatever they call them, different things. Uh, but yeah, they were basically K- KLEs, but for a, uh, but for the specific purpose of that, and they were separate from like, 
if the battalion, you know, if one of the conventional battalion commanders went out and did a KLE, like I would go along with them. I would be on all the KLE. I'd be on all the engagements, but I would also do stuff outside of that on my own. And I would use those KLEs to do an initial spot, spot and assess. And then, uh, and then use those to build rapport. Also, it allowed, uh, for me to, to create a cover through that, like in the sense of, um, I wasn't working. I, I wasn't under cover. I, I was, you know, I wasn't under cover, cover status on this. But you didn't always want them to be to know what it is you were looking for, or looking at, or why you were talking to somebody, that kind of thing. And so I would do all those KLE. God, they, they got boring as fuck. If anybody's done, long time, if you've done them, or if anybody else in here has done them, those KLEs can get boring as shit. But they were fucking. They were a prime <laughs> recruiting pool. Look at this shit. <laughs> <laughs> GMK. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, I'll go Josh on his. Was... Maybe I'll go on his channel one time, and uh, with we'll him, we'll do a tri- we'll do a triple. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> <sighs> But anything uh, else? Do yeah. you want to? Did you want to go over any of my military stuff or anything? I don't know if people know. Do people know it? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you've you've pretty much put it all out there. I guess uh, I have. So yeah, it's all out there. But if anybody doesn't no. know, just in general, I did ten and a half years active duty in the Marine Corps, uh, and then or ten years. I'm sorry, uh, ten years. I don't know why I said half. Uh, ten years, almost to the almost exactly. Uh, ninety three to oh three. I was in uh fir- first, not force. Uh, first. Recon oh wait! Whoa, 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 whoa! What? What did you say? Ninety-three to oh three. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm I'm just writing that down. We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, ninety-three to oh three, and then uh, came back from the invasion. I was I was in first recon when they when we went to uh Iraq for the Iraq invasion. They did a, a generation kill. So they did a mini HBO did a mini series uh like a fiction based on the book based on the coverage of our reporters and um i got back from that and then in november i i got out of the marine corps and uh immediately like i had all the paperwork lined up went into the army reserves and that's when i went that's the psyop unit out of uh jefferson barracks in st louis that that i joined i was uh that's where hippie and i were at in the unit together and then we went to iraq uh oh four oh five uh what was it september oh four i think it was september oh four to july or june oh five and then uh i went to dli to arabic school after that language school and then i got out uh and that's when i went and then i i got out of the reserves and then i i went to i was a contractor and then i was and then i was a, a govy a department of the army dac uh, Department of Army Civilian, they call it, it GG13. Uh, during that time, I was also in uh, for a little bit for a 19th Special Forces Group, Airborne, uh, 219th. Actually, HHC, HHC, because I was an Intel guy, I was a human collector. And so uh, I was in the HHC for the S2 for that. And then I retired out of the government from government uh, in 2018, Feb- January 2018. So there you have it. Guess there who is. else served from 93 to 03? Who was who was in the Marines? No. You? For what? Tuttle. Wait. Oh, as a cop. <laughs> as, a, as a fake. Oh, that's right. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. 93 to 03. When you said that, I was like, ding. Oh, that's funny. Somebody else is 93 to 03. Tuttle. That is funny. Yeah. Yeah, I uh yeah, they were trying to make me uh <laughs> dirty hippie gay gay gg gay gay. So if anybody doesn't know, gg g gg pay scale is the same as gs pay scale. It just means your uh intel. I think it might mean something. I think it's not just intel. Kind of think it is, but uh I don't remember, but yeah, it's the same it's the same pay scale. And it just has to go with like when they furlough people and shit like that. Depends on who you get your money from money from. Yeah, hit the like button. I hate doing the hit the like button thing, but man, it does help. It does help. So yeah, that that was 
that was it. I, I got to do a lot of, uh, oh, I went to Afghanistan. I've done, I, I mean, I've deployed, I did embassy duty in South America. I was in Venezuela, Caracas for a year. Uh, I mean, I've deployed fucking all over. I loved it. But, you know, I, I, it took me away from my kids, which sucks, you know, but now because of that, now I have full time where I can straight, just focus on the kids and, and it's, and it's great, but yeah, it takes you away. I was into it. I was super into my profession. I fucking loved it. Once I got into the DC fucking world and shit like that. And it was like, man, I'm dealing with. You know, I've mentioned it a bunch, but it's really just one of my cool, cooler things I feel like I've done, even though I did it as an analyst. I wasn't an analyst really for very long at all. I got into two uh, two assessments into uh, uh, two presidential daily briefs. And so I, I did not brief the president. It was just they're like, hey, I mean, the truth is uh, and Wally was actually Wally and I were working on the same. I, I roped Wally in. He was at a different agency at the time, but I roped, I roped him in to work on this, on this thing. We were wor working on something in Africa and, um, uh, we used to joke that there was like three of us looking at this country. It was a bit more than that, but, uh, but as far as like an analysts and shit like that. So all of a sudden shit jumped off. We, we were, we were trying to support, a, a resistance movement. We not trying to, we were supporting a resistance movement. Uh, this is open. I'm not telling anybody anything classified. I don't tell you the classified part about it, but we were uh, uh, this resistance movement. And then we were like, okay, if they, and then they were like, we're going to do a coup now. We're like, what? <laughs> they just, it seemed like, I, I mean, kind of the joke of the assessment was, is a couple of dudes got drunk and they were like, fuck it. Let's kick it off. <laughs> Nobody knew. And then the government that of the country, they got, they just got, they got, squashed pretty pretty immediately uh but because of that but because of the coup the attempted coup people were like who the fuck knows anything about this place and someone was like this dude josh <laughs> so so C cia does all the presidential daily they're in charge of getting it all together and so they some my a counterpart over there contacted like hey man this is kind of short fuse but we need something fast can you just can you give a can you give a a few paragraphs on this uh and i did yeah that was that was fucking i loved that dc thing man it i loved it but now the truth is now i can't even imagine i'm too it fry it fried me it all fried me and so i can't even imagine just dealing with the traffic even all of it none, none of it sounds exciting now this is what i like talking to vets smoking some weed yep. i mean i'm not high now but you know, usually smoking some weed, talking with vets, hanging with my kids. It's just, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> but, you know, it was kind of like the blue bacon stuff. I just kind of had to get it out of my system. I had to do it. I had to get it. And, I mean, it's different than that because DC was actually big and good. But uh, I wouldn't, I don't know that I would, I know I know my personality. And I don't know that I would appreciate uh, the, the sort of, low, you know, everything's at, nothing's at a boil anymore. Everything's at, you know, everything's at like just a calm. Simmer. Yeah. And it's, it's, just simmer. Nice. it's just nice. And so yep. I just appreciate that more. So, hey, Untrackable, I haven't seen you for a bit, man. What are you doing? That's still Valor, but it's not in any of my local stores. <laughs> well, that's because you don't have a PX to go to. Yeah. You know, base clothing sales store. Untrackable. I forget what I, I, I feel like you did tell me. Were you. I forgot you told me what you did, but at one point, he's a vet. He's a vet. He's funny. He he's really funny. I like when Untrackables around. So I brought up Tuttle. Yeah, and he's been a great diversion. I agree. Uh, he's been a fantastic diversion, and. I was just poking around on his channel, and I don't think you've ever showed this one. Um, the, <laughs> I I should just share this because mm. share it. Uh, I love Tuttle, man. Tuttle's it, the best. It's, it's very. It's only like a minute forty six. Um, and it's 
the hilarity, especially when you see his audience in the background, um, Mrs. Chief. So uh, I'm going to play a little bit, stop it, comment, just to stay within the Fair Use Act. But uh, yeah, we, we, we can we can talk about what he's wearing as well. Uh, all right, Tug here we go. Butt. Supplemental video. I already made one video. Oh my god! Yes. Chilidi Castro has apparently beat feet from Ironton, Ohio which is the great state that I live in, Ohio. And I'm going to tell you something that's all really funny because Chili was like... Was his wife just shaking her head in the background? What is going on? What is and he, he doing? Is, he is... This is a, about a year ago. Oh, um, my God. This is so good. Actually, it's longer than that. It says May 15th, 2022. Nice. Um, but... You can, if you listen to his voice, you can tell he's shit faced. And look at his wife sitting in the chair behind him with the five head. Oh my God, this is so good. This is so fucking so glad you found this. It looks like he's wearing uh, a bicycle helmet that's got a bunch of GoPro mounts on it. I, what you can't you, really get a good look at the helmet, but it's obviously a bicycle helmet. And it's got like a shitload of GoPro mounts on it. And he's got that flashlight there mounted on the side. It, you can't make this shit up, folks. You really can't. This is like, this is internet gold. It really is. Oh, no. We're going to have transparency. In the gloves. In the gloves. Use. What's up We're with the have gloves? officers that have no arrest powers or anything like that. They oh, have he's hammered. And de-escalate and yada, 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 all that bullshit. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, old uh, Chili oh, DeCastro bounced <laughs> out of that city like uh, a fighter pilot punching out of a burning plane. Tell you what, that's the kind of funny thing that I love to report. It's like, but, Chili, see, this is the counter- Transparency. That's right. The counter transparency. You have six Look at his cameras. Wife. We have eight, two, four, six, eight. Eight cameras. Oh. But, but you can see, like, right here on the front, it's got like a GoPro mount. Yeah. Uh, where you can stick a GoPro camera. It looks like it's got one on each side, and it's probably got one on the back. Because that right there looks exactly like a GoPro mount with the screw that goes through it. Mm. Um, and you can see the vents up here. So it's definitely not a tactical helmet. It's oh, yeah. it's like a, a dark colored bicycle helmet. That is and, fucking uh, hilarious. I, I was like, this is hilarious. You cannot make this, especially with her sitting in the background. I keep waiting for her to just put her hand up on her face. Because uh, she shakes her head several <laughs> times during the video. We have eight cameras, Chili. That's right. We've beaten your transparency model. And this is where the empire strikes back, baby. We're not <laughs> going to put hilarious. up with armed uh, you know, thieves. We're not going to put up with barricaded suspects. We're not going to put up with drug dealers. And we're not going to put up with you there, Chili. So this is the empire strikes back, baby. More to come. This is Chief Tuttle, the country cop, going after Chili Cheese Dick DiCarlo. All units, stand by. Stand motherfucking by, bitch. DiCarlo. Cheese Dick DiCarlo. He can't even get his name right. <laughs> I don't think it's a oh. Mitch. It's not a Mitch helmet. It's, uh, no, it's uh, it, it, the air holes. The tactical ones don't have the air holes because they're, they're, structured it's, stronger yeah it's a ballistic helmet that's why Holy. you wear that he was that's fucked not up. A ballistic helmet. that's not a ballistic helmet no that that's, was not a ballistic helmet that's yeah. a bicycle helmet it could uh, be some sort of police hel- why would you buy that tuttle because not like you ever that. on the police department we got kevlar did you yeah it's there's no reason to have anything with vents you're trying to keep from getting capped in the squash. Yeah. Um, what? I can't believe he was wearing gloves. <laughs> I can't. The whole goddamn setup of Chief, I just love. 
That was I, that, with her sitting in the background, kind of like, yeah. She shook her head that one time, and I was like, "Oh, this is this is primo. You can't make this stuff up." What there, is there's he... just so much content there to go through, and I saw that one, and I said, "Oh, Josh is going to love this one." Oh my god! Just the opening. That laugh was genuine. That caught me off guard. I was not expecting that. I just was not expecting the helmet and the gloves. And everything. <laughs> And then on top of it, he is slammered. He was hammered, man. What? I, it's so funny. I wonder what. But I like to think about like when he does that, especially with his wife there, because like, is he like, I'm making a video, and then he's like, I'll be right back. And I wonder, I wonder if she was like, you know, you're kind of stupid. Why are you putting all that shit on? Scott coming in with the burn. <laughs> Who that gator? Hey, <laughs> it's everybody's favorite. It's really funny. I telling my parents that uh, you're like, oh yeah, you know, I was just trying to explain like people could say anything, and and I was like, for example, one of the running jokes is uh, is that I'm gay, and my dad's like, why why would they get that? And then I'm like watching the show, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> it's like what would give them the impression that you're gay, <laughs> like. I don't know. And then I watch the show and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> it could be gay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it could be Chief Tuttle Bicycle Cop instead of Country God. Cop. I'm so glad you showed me that. <laughs> that just kind of made my day. <laughs> oh, shit. Quit mortifying exactly. your parents, Josh. No, I mean, the truth is, well, I don't want to talk about, my sister's gay. They don't care. It's not like, it, it's not like the, the anybody was. I, I know Jerry's joking here, but uh, no, they, no. I mean, my parents are very liberal, by the way, too, which that's a whole other conversation. But <laughs> my mom did ask if you all were gay. No joke. <laughs> and like I said, man, me and Hippie, two straight dudes, two white cisgender dudes running the gayest site on YouTube. That's our motto over there. If you're new here, yeah, come check us out. It's funny. We have a good time over there. We really, we, we. And the, the thing is, most, 99.9% .9 of the chat just kind of roams around to the, to the different channels. It's, it's uh, been, it's, been it's all the great. same names. I mean, you yeah. see all these people and the common denominator in that was Kaiser. Yeah. Well, and you know what I get a lot too, which which is interesting with the Kaiser stuff is, um, people think it's like, well, you're getting on Kaiser because you like Chris, which is ridiculous. But uh, sim simple minded people, I didn't realize. You know, I say this a bunch, but I, I just didn't understand the uh, how much stupidity is out there. I just I assumed there were some that were just. I figured there was a Kaiser, you know, like that. I just hadn't been around those kind of people, worked with those kind of people. I just hadn't been around all that for, for 25 years, basically. And it just surprised the shit out of me uh, with how fucking dumb some motherfuckers are on here. Just in general. Yeah. <laughs> and then, I mean, thank God, though. Thank God, because it's like, because then it keeps it fun. Tuttle keeps it fun. Tuttle, Tuttle and Huck were uh, two very necessary things that need. I feel like for for my channel and just and just for me, I was because the truth is too is I was like in a game of endurance in my mind with with Kaiser because he's like I got the willpower and I gotta hey listen you can say a lot of shit about this guy I'll give him this it is amazing that he can do three hours of live stream a day and then two to three videos shorter videos a day too i'm not saying it's admirable i'm not saying i would ever ever recommend it to anybody else but it's hard if i if i if i do three hours a day i'm fucking toast i'm just toast and this that dude's got some youtube stamina but again okay good for him because like it's not like i would ever like show my kids Kaiser and be like, you should be like this guy. <laughs> Kittle. It's true. Marine her damn self. True. 
Yeah, and that's one thing I wanted to talk about too. We've got so many veterans that that are in the chats. Um, and when I bring Throat Punch Thursday over to uh, yep, Fine three. Fix, finish. Skeet, skeet. Um, <laughs> I would love to get, you know, all the vets that are in the chat, uh, you know, one at a time. Come on. You don't have to show your face. You just, all you got to have is audio. Come on and, and just bullshit. Talk about your experiences in the military. Um, I love hearing from other veterans. I love hearing their stories and what they went through and what it doesn't matter when you serve, where you served, how you served, uh, just that you did in fact serve. And I'd love to have you up on uh throw punch Thursday. It'd be great. Yeah. So for all you guys, and, cause there's a ton of, there, like he's saying, there's a ton of vets and you know, your story doesn't have to be, any you know it could, it literally can be like well i you know murdered all the taliban or you know what or i cooked i cooked tater tots with glenn harlow you know like the point isn't like it's a big dick or anything it's like just to get up and have vets and like part of the part of the, our generation has this weird thing where it's because of i think it's it's the uh because podcasts and all this stuff came out it's almost like this idea of if you weren't uh navy seal team six dude or whatever then you kind of weren't anything and there's so much um there's just there's so much middle ground of vets that like most of us just you, you did gt is a great example of it you know it it's it's not nothing spe, I, i'm not saying this to you know, it's not like he's got like a fuck ton of valor awards, a silver star and all of this stuff or whatever, but he's got three years in a fucking combat zone. Like those are stories, you know, as an artillery dude. And then as a, you know, artillery guys, obviously they used him for different stuff, but he was out in the, he was out on those fobs. He wasn't, you know, in those cops, he wasn't in some huge fob in Afghanistan, like calf or bath or anything like that. No, he was out there. And those are the stories, you know, just, I, and I and I think what's really cool with the throat punch Thursday idea is, and which is why I'm so glad that you were like, yeah, man, let's put it on your, let's do the show on your thing. It's because we can draw in all the other vets. Other vets can talk. They can tell their, they can tell their stories, you know, and then it becomes like a virtual, whatever, hangout thing that, that we're all doing. And one of the best, I've had two different vets say, hey man, I've met other cool vets that I talk to outside of your chat through, through your channel. And that's, that really not, is that happy happening by the hundreds? No, but even two, I'm like, that's fucking awesome. You know, that's, that's, that's awesome. That's what I like. I mean, I, I, I think sometimes we can, not you and I, but I think sometimes with the military, some people feel like, well, if I didn't, if I didn't, wasn't in Iraq or Afghanistan, I don't know, you know, no, who cares? Like, I, I, you know, and I, I get a lot of people, um, that that well i i you know i didn't do this or i did well no you served you sure. still have stories you still right. served you were still stationed somewhere you have stories about what went on and funny stories or sad stories or whatever um you know yeah. th there's still stuff out there and just well for example my buddy nord i served with nord in the nineties, in the midnight, early mid nineties. And we did, we did a deployment together. We did a Westpac together. He didn't, he got out after that. He got out for four, four years, you know, four and a half, whatever it was. It was like four year term. That guy, I can sit and tell fucking stories. We have stories upon stories upon stories. And he's got great ones. And he, he can, he's hilarious to tell, to, to talk to about it. Not a single one of his stories are combat stories because he wasn't a combat vet. It doesn't make any fucking difference. It's and and the you know the other thing too is like Lupe. I see there's a bunch of people. Uh, Kittle. There's like 90s. I want to get a whole. This is what I also want to. I'm hoping for this throw up on Thursday is we get a bunch more 90s type because the 90s stories are bananas. There was just so much partying. Like I wasn't in in the 80s or like when you were when Brontosaurus was still in MOS, but like. <laughs> But you know, so I don't know how the eighties. I was were, actually, I actually served the entire nineteen eighties. 
Did you really? Were you, yeah, active duty. Cool. How what? How was it in the eighties? Was it a mess? I feel like this. I feel like what I've heard is it, it was kind of a mess, but because post Vietnam, no, nah, you didn't feel like it. No, I thought it was pretty good. As a matter of fact, mm-hmm. after my first enlistment, I stayed. Nice. And uh, I enjoyed it. It was. I don't know. It was just, you know, I got I a lot of good stories. Listen, I couldn't believe. Well, first of all, it's really funny. When I joined the Marines, right, they, people were like, I can't believe you're joining the Marine Corps. Because I was, like, pretty rebellious, and I, I wasn't good with authority or anything. And then in my mind, what I, and what I would say is, I said, hey, I consider myself kind of rebellious and all this. So what's the, you know, if you consider yourself strong, you put as much weight on the bar as you can and you try and lift it. I was like, I consider myself mentally strong, so I want to do the Marine Corps. And I got in it. And I, and the truth is I excelled. I don't mean to make it sound like whatever, but I was like, oh my God, this is my world. This is awesome. This is incredible. All, you work out all the oh. fucking time. You fucking do combatives. You, no, there's your you thumbs up, thumb. you fag. You're weird. I know. There's, it's so weird. There's supposed to be something that you could do and something. I think if you do this or some shit, I don't know. But it's like, uh, is it that? Is it the two? Um, I don't know. Yeah. I was like, man. You PT, you punch each other. You, you know, if, if Maybe you're... Maybe that's it. It's a marathon. Wait, that's it. The shockers. <laughs> uh, you know, you get... It, it was great. I was like, this is the best. And if I can run... For, and it was, everything was a meritocracy. And so I was like, this is the shit. And then I immediately got on an appointment, uh, which in the 90s, in the Marine Corps, it just, you didn't... It, there was just fewer... And so there wasn't, so I got on a deployment and I was like, this is the best. And then I got selected for embassy duty. I was like, this is the shit. And then they're like, we want you to become an officer. And I was like, hell yeah. And I, I did graduate, but I did graduate OCS. Uh, I did not get my degree at the time. So I didn't, I got, I got NJP. I got an article 15 and, and got booted after uh, OCS uh, for being unauthorized UA. We call a wall in the army, UA in the, in the Marine Corps. And, uh, and so I got, I, they were cool. They're like, where do you want to go? Uh, Cause I was at university of Missouri. And then um, I said, send me to the infantry unit at camp an infantry unit at camp Pendleton. And they sent me to the second battalion, fourth Marines. And uh, that was terrible, but I did another deployment and I ended up meeting a dude who ended up being, you know, to this day, one of my best friends. Uh, but uh state department marine steve nolan yeah i was i was an embassy guard yeah i was an emb- uh marine security guard they call it i worked at the embassy in uh the american embassy caracas venezuela uh, i was there 95 to 96 95 to 96 i was there a year and then i got selected for what they call MESEP, uh the marine enlisted marine enlisted commissioning education program green green to gold basically uh mustang to become a mustang uh i never held umbrellas motherfucker <laughs> yeah no Marine, you not. know you you asked about the 80s and i got to thinking about it i spent the majority of the 80s uh january 1983 as a newlywed uh fort bragg north carolina until october of 1987 and i went to germany so um, you know, I spent the majority of the eighties right there at Fort Bragg. We had uh, October 26, 1983, uh, day I won't forget. And, uh, cause I was part of the rapid deployment force and Grenada kicked off. So yeah, we had, go, uh, and then we had you... private, we had privates and PFCs running around fucking Fort Bragg with a mustard stain. And with we had, stain. E7s and shit with master blasters that kind of looked at them with envy, you know? Yeah. Because there was, there was only a very small contingency of uh, uh, 82nd guys that actually jumped. Uh, Rangers jumped, and then 325, I think, a portion of them jumped. But uh, everything else, once the airfield was secured, was, was C-130 yeah. then. Because it was one forty ones from Bragg to Barbados, and from Barbados to the island was one thirties. 
Were you in Desert Storm? Yeah. Damn. So you got a lot. So you got Grenada, uh, Desert Storm, and Iraq, right? Yeah. And I missed uh, Panama. Man, those are good times right there. Uh, someone, Joey asked if I had ever thought about being a gunner. Uh, so to be a gunner, you, you uh, no, to short answer. I did. I mean, I did. You know, warrant officer is um, what I did try to do. Uh, this is before, obviously, before I switched. Uh, I wanted to be a human guy really badly <clears throat> uh, before I became one. But um, I apply, I actually applied to the army to become an army warrant officer, which you can do. You can request an inter service transfer, whether they do it or not. It's pretty, you know, back then it was pretty rare, but it did, it did happen. Usually what had happened for was dudes who were going to go be pilots, uh, warrant officer pilots in the army. That was yep. where, that's where I got the idea. Cause we had a guy who did that and I thought, oh, and so I tried to do it for human and, uh, it didn't, it didn't work. Um, not, a, not a huge deal, but, uh, yeah, but I, I didn't really want to be a gunner because a gunner is specifically, they are the small arms experts. That's what the idea is, is a small arms expert of your unit or that, you know, that's their whole thing. And usually they're infantry guys. You don't have to be an infantry guy to do it. Uh, but that generally is who, who the gunners are. No, they, those guys were awesome. Ted, yes, it is. It's uh, in the about. It's MSG retired 11 at gmail.com. 11 is the 2011. That's when I retired. So it's MSG retired 11 at gmail.com. It is public. Uh, Elric asked if, uh, where were you when Beirut bombed? Beirut was 85. Right. I, I would have still been at Bragg, but that. We, we weren't Marines. involved with that. As a yeah, matter of fact, was, I, I was going to my E5 board when that happened. Uh, yeah, that's a thing for uh, uh, the Marine. The Marine barracks is what got bombed. And then I'm almost positive it was 85. Um, somebody may know better than uh, than me. That was a big thing on those Marine sites is these guys were like, oh, I was in Beirut. Like that was a big lie for a lot of folks for a while. Even on even on Marine pages, it was, it's really crazy that people would lie, like literally a social media site that is nothing but Marines and other Marines. And then you're like, this, I was in Beirut. And dudes are like, no, you weren't. <laughs> like, shut up. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's funny to talk about the uh, the Army's warrant officer flight program. Uh, 1982, July 82, I went into that program. As a matter of fact, one of the guys that was in the chat earlier, Owen, I forgot to say hello. Uh, he was we were there at the same right? time. Yeah, I was orange flight. I think he was brown flight. Um, I was on med hold. I had fucked my hand up and I got all kinds of scars here where they have to do reconstructive surgery on it. What happened? <laughs> and then when that was all taken care of, I couldn't pass a class one flight physical to go back. Oh, that so, yeah, it is what it is. Yep. Yeah, Owen's there. Red flight. That's what it red was. Flight. Red flight. Yeah. So yeah, we stomped. Uh, we we hovered around the the drag out in front of Sixtieth Company. <laughs> oh, Bernsey said it was eighty three. He just looked it up. In fact, okay, that that makes sense because when you said eighty three initially, I was like, oh, he's gonna say Beirut. I thought you were talking about Beirut, but I'm I'm so marine. It's really funny because I spent between my time in the reserve. Now I was I was in the Army Reserves for five years, but I was activated for four of that um i uh and then i was a department of the army civilian and i i was in 19th group but i was barely i was barely there but um i know so much less about the army than i do about the marine corps and i've spent you know one and a half time way more time in the fuck in the army people are like i went to i went to this one school this trade act school and they're like hey you can't wear black. So I was wearing black ankle socks. Uh, they're like, you can't wear that. Not now you can, but back then you couldn't. And I was like, since when? And they're like, since forever. And why don't you have a PT belt? And you're wearing the old army PT shirt. <laughs> I was like, oh, 
<laughs> so what, what what happened to my hand? We were doing uh, what we used to call kill ball, this giant ball. Everybody's in the crab position, and you try and get it over the other guys, get it over. Anyway, I got my hand. My hand was down like this, and it got squashed and snapped my left thumb Ugh. and bent it all the way back over. So, yeah, they put it in the cast expecting that it was just going to be fine, but it wasn't. Yeah, that sucks. And, that, sounds uh, like that hurt. Yeah, it wasn't fun. It was not fun. Woodrow, that's if he didn't enjoy showering in the Army with other dudes. I will tell you this. I In the Army, I don't believe I've ever showered with other dudes. Uh, I don't know. In the Marine Corps, it felt like we were doing that. That was all the time. Yeah, and it wasn't like the, Marine Corps, the Marine. The Marine Corps tends to have bigger dicks, and so I enjoyed that more. I can't remember what month, but it was early in '83 because I had gone. I went to the E5 board in '83 at Bragg. It's really amazing. I don't know if people really fully get that. A retiring from the army, you got three combat tours. You got Grenada, Desert Storm, Iraq. You got, and then you were in for thirty years, and then you were police <clears throat> for how, well, how I long? Well, I wasn't in. Now I'm like you. I've got that ninety two with the early out oh. program. Then I was in the reserves. Then I was in the guard, and then I got back on active duty to finish up my time for a full active duty retirement. Gotcha. So 30 years over the span and then. Yeah, yeah 33, gotcha. and 33 and change, actually. I have had a U.S. Army military ID card for, th well, my entire life yeah. from 1978. And I still have one. It's retired, but I still have one. So that entire time I have always had a military ID card. So between between military and combat, <clears throat> police, police, policing for what 20 30 more years no 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 right. nine years oh nine oh nine okay still i retired in 2011 oh, from the arm. oh no 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 oh 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 okay oh i thought it was and longer then I fuck, and then I, then I played catch me fuck me for a couple of years uh yeah. not knowing really what to do and home down department i said yeah what the hell we'll give it a shot and, so you got uh, the you got the police thing, and then now you're racing motorcycles at in super high speeds. What yes. do you? What in your mind do you think is going to be the thing that eventually kills you? Because <laughs> man, you keep my expiration date. <laughs> my expiration date. <laughs> because I yeah. am a I firmly believe everybody's got an expiration date, and when that date comes, it doesn't matter what you're doing. Yeah. You could be standing at the fucking bus stop. And you're dead. When your expiration date comes up, bye bye. That's the way I look at it. And you had to have looked at it the same way when you're in a combat zone. If it's my I, time to go, it's my time to go. That's the only way I could go out the wire. I felt that. You know what? I also compartmentalized a lot. I was, there was stuff where, I mean, you know how it is, man. You get in one or two gunfights and you're okay. You're like, Oh, I'm invincible almost. You know, you're like, am I pushing my luck? I would just, I just truly believe like that same thing. Like, I can't help it. Look, if I, if I go, I go, but I don't feel like I'm going to go. And I just, I don't know. I just, I get amazed at, I, I can't believe how lucky I am and fortunate I am. Have all my fingers and toes and all that. Yes. Uh, I mean, the P PTSD is severe, but, you know, like, that's getting worked. But, I mean, of all things to come out with, you know, like, I see these guys on commercials and shit, dudes who got blown up in bombs and fucking amputees and are burned. Vic I'm like, oh, my God, I cannot believe. I mean, I was in two IEDs. Luckily, obviously, I mean, one one was in front too far in front of us, and we just got the concussion from it. And somehow they just, they timed it wrong and they just missed the vehicles and it went kind of in between our vehicle and the one in front of us. But, <clears throat> and it, and it, boom, it did that. Like, uh, you got a video where the road, you know, they buried yep. it too deep and it was kind of the same thing. Um, and then there was another one. This one was unbelievable. It, it couldn't have been fucking 15, 20 feet max 
from us and and it was a vehicle and we're staged and we were doing the units were doing raids all night and they were raiding raiding mosques and and it was a dual they had some conventional guys there but it was jsoc that was doing the hits and um we we were out there and so then we ducked in we kind of tucked in with this uh uh abrams that this column of abrams that were about to head back into the fob so we ducked in with them and there was a vehicle over there and thank god these fucking dudes they it blasted up so it tore the roof you know like it tore through the roof and we were right there and my i mean it it rocked the shit out of the vehicle and my gunner dougie i was like because man if that thing would have been facing towards us we would have been fucked especially dougie would have been probably chopped in half but like this was one of my prouder moments too i was like because we hear him it's the same thing you know how it goes boom and then cut, 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 and then small arms it kicks off their small arms and so i'm like i'm i'm tapping dougie because i'm in the driver's or in the you know tcc i'm tapping doug i'm hitting him i'm like start motherfucking shooting dude and he's like well i because I, I would tell him all the time do not pull the trigger unless you can positive, positively ID the dude. And you're, you PID, man. Do not be reckless. Don't just shoot. You're slinging lead. And so PID, he's like, hostile intent. Yeah. And it, it's all going. I'm like, fucking start shooting, goddamn. He goes, boss, I can't PID anybody. And I'm like, that takes discipline. That takes discipline. You're, you're in a vehicle. You just got rocked. I mean, the two of these probably can cost, and we didn't really know it back then. But like, because i mean it fucking rocked the vehicle so he's up there but i was like that takes discipline and i'm fucking proud of that dude because it would be hard not to be like go, 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 you know just start shooting your fucking crew served up there uh but yeah i was uh stone sorry i'm just like i had an interaction with the marine who was severely burned he was still serving active duty in uniform i was working at fort sam where most injured were sent to the uh bmac yeah, I, I listen, I, you know, I just, uh, I, I can't believe how lucky I am. I don't know if it's lucky, good, or what, what the fuck is all that? Uh, what's all that from? Are you seeing that? You seen your balloons? I didn't see. Oh, that was funny. Huh, I wonder what that was from. I don't know, you said a bunch of... Maybe I was falling asleep. <laughs> oh, with my story? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta bust your ball for some reason. Hey, we've been on air. Uh, hour yeah, and hour and a half. yeah. I usually don't go this long, but I'm, it's always fun talking with you anyway. Um, and I can talk. Yes. You can. <laughs> Thank it's God. It's not my for... birthday, Jerry. <laughs> All right, it's cool. Not well, my birthday, Jerry. But, uh, yeah, and, you know, I actually interact with the chat a little bit more than I usually do, which I usually tend to ignore it. Um, but, oh, one thing I do want to say, Lupe, I want to get you on a Throw Punch Thursday because I think you've got a very unique story. Uh, Air Force, Alaska, smoking a little ganja and got caught. And, uh, oh, I mean, really? that, that's, yeah, I, I believe that's what she was saying. And it'd be great just to hear your your whole experience. Uh, no camera needed, but uh, I'd love to have you on. So, uh, have, fuck you, Woodrow. <laughs> I will fight a chat if I have to. <laughs> <laughs> and I like you guys, but I'm siding with Top on this one. We're gonna fuck you. Fuck your stuff. <laughs> That's right. Only he could bust my balls about my age. Um, but so, here's yeah, the thing. So Half of the fucking younger guys I know can't keep up with me. So, Listen, good luck, I motherfucker. I, I, I don't. I couldn't. I know I couldn't. I mean, back in the day, I could. I'm, I'm out of it. I'm so. Uh, I look at your shit, man, and I'm like, God damn, I got to get my, not my shit together, but I'm like, it, it. Because one thing PTSD, and we'll cut it. I won't start a whole new conversation with it. But one thing the PTSD does, is, I mean, because there's a depression that comes with it, right? And and it, it does get you. It, that takes your energy away. It does. It, God, it fucking it, does. It does. Uh, it just makes you completely drained and and not wanting to do anything. And you know, you become a fat dork. Yeah. What is happening? Happening to me. 
but that's why this has all been great. But uh, but yeah, well, I won't start a whole nother thing with this. But yeah, so if you guys just check out, it may uh, as soon as we get it up, it should be soon here. Uh, the Patreon infrastructure, it's all getting worked. Um, we're gonna do a five dollar, eight dollar, and uh, fifteen dollar tier. The five dollar is gonna get you uh, all the archives of Stoned Vet. That's basically kind of just the entry level. Uh, I call it the infantry platoon level. Like you're just, you're in, boom, you're starting out. Uh, the next level is the special operations forces. I usually don't go on that. Uh, well, that's usually if it's like a hot dog down a hallway. <laughs> that's when we'll say that. Uh, so yeah, and then you're going to get the, the, the $8, $8 a month is going to get you uh, two episodes a month of Throat Punch Thursday. You got to figure Chris, out. It's not my birthday. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, Jerry, anyway, I'll look at, you guys will look at Jerry. Too, I'm, you're gonna I'm get gonna a bunch kick of your ass, Jerry. <laughs> Fucking Jerry starting this shit about my birth. My birthday's not until October, so fuck off. Uh, just look at Lazy Hippie, a prime example of uh, CPT, CPTSD. Get help. Get help. Listen, this is the one thing I can fucking say. I, I, I. I'm not great about it. I, and I didn't get myself help for a very long time. And then I self-medicated with heavy drinking and that did not work at all. And so get help, talk to other vets and, and, and get, and, and get help. It's there. I mean, the beauty of the VA system right now is with the PTSD, there, there are things in place that, that, you know, even if you're not, I think, I think even if you're not rated, you can still get you can still get help, but yeah, don't don't crawl into a bottle. <laughs> That's what I did, and it didn't work. And and you know, way better with help. And listen, if, if maybe weed's not your thing, I don't know, but if you're willing to try it, I'm telling you, weed has been cannabis in general has been extremely extraordinarily helpful for me, except for your weight. Except for wait, yeah. Well, I eat like a yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. I still think I'm like, oh, I'm all right. And then I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, I'm getting fucking fat. <laughs> but it's all right. That's like I made the comment about the skinny yinny picture the other day. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, that's a great one. And I love that picture, by the way. It is definitely right. old. I mean, it's 25 years old. Because we would be here for like a four hour, five hour freaking live stream, which I'm not up to. Uh, but, uh, Hey, everybody, oh, thanks good. a bunch. Stay tuned because there's going to be a lot of news coming out, how everything's going to change with throw punch Thursday. And, uh, it's going to move over there. There's some other, the, the Jeff and Jerry show will be coming. Uh, <laughs> I think I, I know the Jeff, Jeff's Jeff, Jeff, like, Jerry is, I think that's the name of the show. I think the Jeff and Jerry show, show. So yeah. regardless of what they say, it's the Jeff and Jerry show. It's the Jeff and Jerry uh, show for sure. Yep. And you're going to have, as always, your Stone Vet uh, show with his co-host, Dirty Hippie. Dirty Hippie. So, uh, you know. All right. Yeah. Stay tuned. I'll be, I'll definitely be, uh, I don't know tomorrow. I may be leaving tomorrow for St. Louis. I please. So guys, just check the community page, check the thing. If we're doing a show tomorrow. Uh, it'll be on, but I'll I'll say one. I'll let you know one way or the other. But I think and Lupe, I'm... everybody wants to see you up on. Uh, yes, Throw Punch Thursday. Send me an email, msgretired11 at gmail dot com. Send me an email, Lupe. It'd be great. I think you, you'd have a good time. Anyway, so guys, make sure you uh, like, subscribe, all that other bullshit, and uh, thank you so much, and have yourself a great day. Later, guys. <laughs>